Good afternoon and welcome to Poor Art slash Abstract Painting with Nicole. This will be class three. Today we'll be going over how to make our peacock to put on the peacock feather that we did, the peacock feather pour that we did last week. Okay, let's get started. But before we get started, I just wanted to show you what our, uh, what a finished piece would look like. So this is one of my finished pieces of a um, peacock. Now remember last week we did the feather part, the part that's going around the back of it. Remember we used the sink, uh, um, sink strainer and did that part. So today we're going to do the body of the peacock, the part that's in the middle. This canvas here is the one that we did, actually did last week and I let it uh, I moved it around a little bit and I kind of like the effect that it got. Like it looks pretty cool. That would be a nice painting just like that. Remember we put the strainer in the middle, then we poured the paint in the strainer and let, let the paint branch out. And I kind of like the way those golds and greens look together. This is an example of one of the ones that one of my students did, but she never got to uh, finish it due to COVID-19. But this is the peacock that she made, and we're going to make our peacock out of clay. So she made the peacock out of clay, fired it, painted it. And this is the part that we did with the sink strainer. We put the strainer in the middle, poured the paint, and then it branched out into the peacock feathers. Okay, I've already, uh, I had a drawing of a peacock body that I did, and I just put, rolled my clay out with a rolling pin. If you don't have a rolling pin and you're at home, or if you have a rolling pin and you, want, you don't want to use that for clay, you can use a spray can or, you know, something like that to roll your clay out. Then I just, uh, traced the body of the peacock onto the clay and cut that out of the clay and that's how I have my peacock shape here but the original peacock body came from a drawing one of my original drawings and then I just translated that to the clay okay so today we're going to fin finish detailing out our uh, peacock body now the kind of clay I'm using is uh, 105 sculpting clay, but if you don't have that, I would recommend you just get the self-drying clay. You can order that from Michaels, Hobby Lobby, or Joann Fabrics, or any kind of art store, and just get the self-drying clay. With that kind of clay, you won't have to put, use a kiln or any, anything to fire your clay. It'll just uh, air dry, and then you'll be able to paint on it after it air dries. Okay, two tools that I'm going to use today are a, uh, this is called a needle point tool, and then it has a, the needles on this part, then it has a little scoop on this end. This is a Kemper uh, detailing tool, so this is good for just if you want to pull your clay out. See, it's smaller on this end, smaller on that end. You're going to need a, a spray bottle. You could just use like an old um, spray bottle that you have for like hair products or something like that. Don't go out and try to buy something. Try to use something that you already have at the house. You want to use, get a little cup to put some clay in. You want to crumble up your clay like this and put a little bit in there. Add a little water to it and this is going to be slick. Slip is just basically watered down clay that we're going to use like a glue. We're, we're adhering one piece of clay to the other. I know that's a lot, but I'm trying to get a lot into this uh, recording at one time. So now I've already drawn my lines in. Now I'm going to come back with my Kemper tool and we want to get the lines just a little deeper. So we're going to take that, this tool, and pull our clay out. Thank you. 
And you want to clean the clay out each time. So we'll dig a little bit of the clay out. Clean our tool and come back and get the rest. And I always like to put my lines into the clay first of what I'm going to be pulling out. that line drawn in. I did that with my needle point tool. I drew my line in first. You want to come back with your Kemper tool. sculpting clay because it stays wet a little longer than the other clays but I know right now you really just want to use what you have or what you have easy access to and I know a lot of the stores do have that self drying clay so that would be your best bet and it costs about $12 a box giving it a little dimension and like right up under here where the face is I dug some of that clay out a little bit so that part would be raised up I just like, like it to have a little dimension to it and I normally do that with all my abstract paintings like you could just paint a flat peacock on the canvas or you could make it look like it's popping off of the canvas getting the grooves in there I'll come back and detail it out just lay that tool down pull. if you don't have one of these you could also use like a um, coffee straw or you know just utilize different things you already have in the house you really don't have to go out and buy pottery tools if you don't have a needle point tool you could just get a little piece of wire use it. The key is to use what you have at home already. And just come back and smooth that out. And I put slash abstract art on this class because we'll be doing a lot of things. A lot of, we'll be using a lot of different mediums for one piece. So in this one we're using paint and clay. We're using both of those together to make one paint. 
All right, now we're gonna come in and I wanna make this beak look like it's coming up off of the face. So I'm gonna add a little bit to it. spray your whole piece with water so it doesn't dry out too much. That's what your spray bottle's for. Some people just get a sponge and, you know, wring the sponge out on them. But I like just a little light mist in the water so you don't mess your whole piece up. a piece of clay to another piece of clay you want to score it just like you do when you're cooking and you score your meat so we're going to put a few little score marks going this way and you want to cross hatch it so we're going to have a few more going that way and you want to do that to the same part that you're attaching your a piece of clay to so score this Now we're going to use the slip. And remember I told you slip is basically watered down clay that you use as a glue. When you're trying to put two pieces of clay together. The reason it's a good idea to use slip is because when you're attaching two pieces of slip of clay together, you don't want to have an air pocket in the middle. If you have an air pocket in the middle of your clay, once you put it in the kiln to fire it, that can make it explode with the air pocket. So anytime you're attaching two pieces together, you want to make sure they're on there really good. our scoop tool we're going to use the back part of that and just make sure the edges are on there good and the little part with it that we missed down there we can just take a little bit of clay Blend that in to the part here. Get it on there. 
rest in peace to little Richard. Now he just passed. He is one of my favorite musicians. Just certain little parts. This part up here, I'm not sure what they call that on the peacock, but I'm just going to call it the hair on the top of the peacock's head for a lack of a, not knowing what else it is. We're just going to put a little line at the top here. And like I said, it doesn't have to be like this. You can do it however you want it. But I would recommend looking at some pictures of a peacock before you start making it. Kind of get an idea. out any way you want. Now for mine, I'm going to try to cut out some little slits up here at the top. class as well. But I'm just doing a little bit of it here just for this little project.
that's basically it with the um, body of the peacock. And like I said, one of my uh, students did this one here. She kept her uh, the beak and everything on hers flat. But I still like how that copper looks on there in the light. And this was the uh, how she was going to put hers. But like I said, she never got a chance to finish it. So basically after I would finish this, you would let it dry. If you get the self-drying clay, you know, let it dry. You can just let it air dry. Once it air dries, you can paint it any kind of way you want it. You know, just look up peacocks. They have purple ones, greens. It's just up to you. But for mine, I'm going to let it air dry. I put it in the kiln, fire it, and come back and paint the whole thing. But that's basically it for the peacocks. You can either have the feathers like this. That we, you know, how we did the swirl, the uh, sink strain feathers last time. You could leap this, you know, did do it how we did it last time and let it sit. Or like with this one, you could move your paint around a little bit. And I'm a, like, I like this one too. But it's up to you. Okay, um, that's basically it for today's class. Next week. We'll be going over the um, Coke bottle pour. So if you can, just save some of those plastic Coke bottles because we're going to need that for next week. And that'll be a part four class. I hope you enjoy today's part three pour class, the Peacock Feather Pour. And I hope you um, like how it all comes together in the finished piece. And like I said, just take your time and... Um, you know, enjoy what you're doing. I'll see you next time.